Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. In this episode, we're going to be rehousing my Serial Pogopus species Valhalla, also known as Lampropelma species Valhalla, Omothymus species Valhalla, and Formingo Chylus species Valhalla. Bottom line, I'll explain a little more in the video. Nobody's quite sure where this one falls, but that's what it's been identified as in the time being and being sold mostly as Serial Pogopus. Now, this species is one that is not particularly prevalent in the hobby right now. I believe they were only discovered a few years ago. However, there are some folks picking them up that have been asking me if I have one, if I could do a husbandry video on them, so here we go. Now, the Seriopagopus species Valhalla is an old world spider from Thailand. It is a very large arboreal with females supposedly reaching seven and a half to even over eight inches. Beautiful spider if you've seen them. And as with most Asian arboreals, they are usually very shy and would prefer to hide, but if caught out in the open, could be defensive. And remember, it is an old world species with very potent venom and a large spider, so a bite would not be pleasant. Also in this video, we'll be doing something a little bit different. I'm gonna be using a new style of enclosure that I found on Amazon that I kind of picked up as a joke you'll see when you get into the video but I do kind of a little review for it to start this one off for people who are I'm not sure if these are available overseas at least in the United States are looking for an alternative to some of the acrylic or glass enclosures we have so I will have that in the beginning of the video if you'd like to skip that what I will do is I'll put the time to skip to down here that will actually feature the rehousing of the spider but for folks always ask me what type of enclosure I'm using in the video this will kind of spell it out for you so enough talking let's take a look at the rehousing for serial pod species Valhalla. All right, so this is going to be an unboxing and kind of a review for, <laughs> we've been struggling with how to pronounce this. I'm going to be completely honest. I bought this because the name made me giggle. It's Crapelles, C-R-A-P-E-L-L-E-S, Crapelles. I just love that it has the word crap in it. Small vertical insect glass terrarium. I found these on Amazon. I love going on Amazon and trying to find things that may be suitable for keeping tarantulas in and trying them out. So that way people can either know that they have a good option or they can change their money if they're a total, for lack of a better term, crap. And again, I have knives that aren't very sharp. That tends to be the, this is so I don't cut myself because I cut my butter knives. And the best part is there'll be somebody, because every time I do some type of unboxing video, there's somebody that doesn't matter what I'm unboxing, how cool it is, comes on just to comment that my knife needs to be sharpened. So yep, whoever you are, my knife does need to be sharpened. So let's open this up. Oh yeah, I actually really like the packaging for these guys. I'm gonna try to get this out without. Uh, environmentally friendly foam. Get that out of the way. Oh, it's right side up. That works out perfect. So there is the actual packaging. Now these are comparable in size to the Exoterra Nano Talls, right? Exoterra Nano Talls, I always screw that one up. The eight by eight by 12 ones, these are about eight by eight by 11 and a half or so. And I'll show how the top works. Oh, I would show how the top works if it wasn't upside down. I guess it isn't right side up. There we go. And it looks like I gotta check out some of their other stuff. Cause if you look here, Looks like they have quite a few different options. Now these are a little pricier. They sell for about 65, I think, with free shipping on Amazon, which I know folks out there will be like, oh, that's too expensive, totally get it. But for those of us used to buying the acrylic enclosures, those are up, you know, for this size are up there usually around nowadays, 70 to 90 bucks for some of those. These are nice, thick glass. And I'm gonna show what comes in this. Now, a lot of the stuff that comes in this is useless, but there are a couple things that I did use. So if you look at how the top works here, if Billy can come in, there's gonna be a feeding, a little feeding window that goes in there that's in here. I think it's to keep it from breaking during travel. And if you pull that open, it snaps, comes up, and you have a top opening enclosure. And these are pretty easy to get out when you want them out of the way. That was my big worry, is that during rehousing, I wouldn't want this thing over here. A, these things aren't particularly thick. They would probably snap right off. And B, I don't, if I want to drop this into something and shoot the spider out, I don't want this in the way, but you can take it right out. And then we've got a bunch of, oh, those are kind of cigar shaped filler. Lots more stuff to go on the recycle bin. And here are the little toy. Now they give you some, two different types of carpet. Obviously you wouldn't use that for a tarantula, so that can probably go in the recycle bin. And then here, we have, if I can figure out where to open it. Let's 
There we go. So a little resin hide that I probably, which has actually a little water area that's pretty cool. That could be used for a juvenile. I wouldn't use it for anything I'm gonna put in here because this is gonna be an arboreal species. Then we have two of the hatches that go for the top of this, which is great. So if this one, if you accidentally snap it off, they give you an extra one, which I think is pretty good. Or it could just be an indicator that you're probably gonna end up breaking that off at some point. The little glass water dishes, I have one of these in with one of my Huntsman spiders, really like these. Little blue, uh-oh, little blue tongs. Those are always useful. Little pipette that kind of got crunched, there we go, little pipette. Plastic plant, eh, I, I did stick it in, I think, with one of my Huntsman spiders. I used it in a totally different cage than the one I set up with this. And then I have no idea what this is supposed to be, so if anybody wants to chime in on what they think that is, it's a magic cube, I guess. It opens up. I, I don't know. I have no idea. But it's cool, nonetheless. So it comes with some neat accessories that you could probably use in different things. I mean, this you could throw in. This you could definitely throw in. This I definitely use for something. I have one that I'm kind of waiting on. But overall, I mean, if you're looking for the glass enclosures and you don't want to buy the exoterras or you don't feel like swapping out the exoterra lids these lids obviously don't have the wire mesh on them so it'll make them a little bit safer and i can tell you i've had a spider in one of these now for about what three months or so and it's doing just great so what we're going to do afterwards is we're going to set this one up we're going to put a tarantula in this one and obviously you'll see that it makes a really good enclosure for some of the arboreals so there we go crapels <laughs> crapelas crapels i'm just going with crapels i just love the sound of it Small vertical insect glass terrarium. I definitely like these. So if you're looking for a glass option for your tarantulas, your arboreals, or even I should mention fossorial species. I don't leave that out. I'm, I'm putting an arboreal in this. Actually, I'm putting a species in it that does some digging and has some arboreal tendency. So I need to put some substrate in, but you could load this bad boy up with substrate up to here and have it be for a fossorial species, which is excellent because there's not a lot out there for the fossorial. So crepels, small vertical insect glass terrarium. I like them. If you don't mind spending the money on them, I think they work great for tarantulas. So we're about to rehouse my Cereopagopus species Valhalla, which is an Asian arboreal from Thailand. Now just a note about the Cereopagopus genus. Cereopagopus generally are burrowing spiders. This one is thought to be arboreal. Again, a lot of these species will start off as almost fossorial species. Well, they'll burrow, they'll web up. I think in the wild, the slings will burrow and web up around the roots of trees and plants and such, and then they start to get their arboreal tendencies later on, kind of like Omothymus velocipes that will burrow a bit as slings, burrow a bit as juveniles, sometimes burrow a bit as adults, but eventually they come up and have those arboreal tendencies. So in setting these guys up, you want to make sure that they have deep, moist substrate, because this is an Asian species. You'll see this one here. It has a decent amount of substrate. It has the little cork bark. I don't know if this is showing round which it built its home in and then burrowed down and beneath and probably lined all of that with webbing so when we pull this up I, out of the enclosure i got a funny feeling we'll have like a sock of webbing that it'll be in i had a little water dish before it was in this i had it in a large dram vial and again it did a lot of burrowing so keep in mind earlier on they will burrow but as they reach the adult sizes they will you'll start to see more of those arboreal tendencies so what we are going to do here is we're going to put it into this now i have Shot the video beforehand of our Crapella unboxing. This is the Crapella. I just can't, I don't even know that's the way you say it. Crapel? There's no way to say it where it sounds really nice. It's Crapella, crap. I like it's crap, I love it. Um, beautiful glass enclosure. Now what we have here is about three to four inches of BioDude substrate, which is moist. Obviously we're gonna keep those lower levels moist so it can dig through and find the moisture level it needs. I've got some fake foliage in here. This piece of cork bark, I am so excited about. I found this in my box of cork bark because there's an opening here and an opening here that gives it two possible places to make the entrance to its burrow. So you have nice green sphagnum moss in here. We have green sphagnum moss inside here. The point of that is to make the, the hide a little tighter. This is a smaller spider at this point, probably about three inches, three and a half inches or so. And they like those tight spaces. They'll also be able to use that sphagnum moss if it goes in here, starts webbing to kind of create its burrow. Then we have leaf litter. I will be putting in a water dish and I would definitely keep water dishes with these guys as soon as the spider's inside. We just don't have it there now. So it's not in the way when we try to rehouse the spider. So what we are going to do here is we're going to try to get the spider out 
I'm going to try to get some images of it. The paper towels, just for anybody that asks, I usually mention this when I do a video of a faster species. The paper towels in the corner is because if the spider gets out, a lot of times what they want to do is they will circle the enclosure. And if they come to the paper towel, they feel hidden underneath it. So it causes them to kind of calm down for a bit. And then hopefully you can get the paper towel out of the way and cup them. To date, I think it's only, we've only caught that on camera once. But it only have, it has to work once for it to be totally worthwhile. Now, while I'm getting this one open, I'll talk a bit about growth rate. I was expecting these guys to be super fast. They're more of a moderate growth rate. Now, if you see on here, when we got it, I believe it was 2021. And it has molted four times since then, three times since then. So kind of a slower grow, but they eat great. And this one, if I come out in the morning, I'm going to say she. I'm hoping it's a she. I haven't gotten a really good look at her yet, but fingers crossed because I really want to grow this because the females get to be about eight inches green emerald green carapace velvety black legs gorgeous spiders but hopefully it ends up being a she but she's usually out in the morning oh boy oh yep <laughs> good thing i didn't put the cup aside there she is down there so this did not quite work out as planned i was hoping the whole this is why I you plan ahead. My whole plan was to hopefully have her come out with this, which would make it very easy. But now at least we have we have to get her out. So it's not like we're bothering her just to get footage of her. I have to get her out of here. So let's point this toward the paper towel. Carefully. We have a lot of times with the dirt ones. I don't know if just be very careful if we can get our shots of her there. I oh, should turn the light on here. Here we go. I should not have her go up my arm. I'm holding the brush in my mouth if anybody's wondering. All right, so let's see if we can get her into Old Faithful here. Actually, Old Faithful's holes are kind of big. Sometimes what you can do is get the dirt, hit them like that. All right. So just to explain what I did there when doing the fossorial species, a lot of times the dirt's packed down. And when you're trying to get them to move out of the old enclosure, if you squeeze it, the dirt kind of falls down, kind of touches their bum, and it naturally makes them move away from it, which is up into there. So just to explain that. So there she is up in the top of here. I'll hold that up. Looking pretty, hoping it's a female, but again, for those of you that have raised these, I know they're fairly new, I don't know how many there are out there, please feel free to chime in about what you found with them. Maybe a lot of times at this size, they are sexually dimorphic and they, people can point to them and go, oh, yep, that's a male. What I'm gonna try to do is get this one to go down here. I should probably take the top off this and do it the other way. Unfortunately, this is probably going to be the last we see of her. We use the bigger brush. If she's nice, she'll stay out in the open. All right. Hopefully, get some shots for there. I'll close this. So again, as far as keeping these guys, deep moist substrate is the key. Deep moist substrate will be the key all the way through adulthood. I will make sure that my Asian arboreals always have quite a few inches of substrate because again, you want to make sure they have that moisture level and the best way of keeping them from drying out too soon or having a situation where they dry out and you don't realize it is to keep that substrate nice and deep so that it withholds the moisture. Now, as far as feeding, she's an awesome feeder. Do you want me to turn off the light or is it working? As far as feeding, awesome eater. I love, she'll, I'll catch her out in the morning or sometimes at night she'll come out and I'll open the top. She'll go and hide, but if I drop her items in there, she'll come right out and grab them and then slowly make her way back into her burrow. Hopefully we still see some of that behavior now that she's in this larger enclosure. Although I will guess with having all this room now, she'll be a little more coy and shy for the time being. 
temperatures, the temperature in the tarantula room is usually around 72, 73 in the wintertime, although we've had days where it's super cold outside where it drops down to the 60s. She's done just fine. I've seen no difference in her growth rate or eating when it gets a little cooler. In the summer here, like right now, we're looking at 79, but usually it's around 80 to 84 or so up here. So it gets a little warmer. But again, with most species of spiders, if you keep them at room temperature, they will do just fine. There'll be no issues. So what we hope she will do here is take residence inside the cork bark. This should hold her for quite some time. If she does hit eight inches in leg span, if she does get to be that big of a spider, obviously she'll need a larger enclosure, but in the interim, this should work just fine. If not, if she doesn't take residence in here, what they sometimes do is go behind the cork bark and create one. So we'll see. I will do an update when she finally settles in and starts webbing and creating her burrow to show where she ended up. And of course, we will drop a water dish in there as soon as we're done filming. So there we go, Sariopagopus species, or Kyriopagopus, how is it, is it pronounced as a, it's Latin, so I can't remember if the C should be a hard C, I think it can go either way. Sario, Kyriopagopus species, Valhalla, love, probably one of the most badass names, common names or names for a tarantula ever. My son Roan was obsessed with this because he's obsessed with Vikings and that type, and the Norwegian culture, and was really excited to find out there was a spider called the Valhalla, and then he saw it and was even more excited. So hopefully get a big female because he keeps asking about this one and really wants to see that big green carapace and those black legs. Awesome spider, definitely we'll keep you guys updated as she grows and uh, hopefully in a couple of years we'll be doing a rehouse of a nice big female. So the nice thing about recording these videos and waiting a little while to post them is I can sometimes get some footage of how they went and settled in. And of course, although I found that wonderful piece of cork bark that I was hoping she'd be able to create a little den in, she did go behind it. So as you can see here, she's behind the cork bark. She's webbed up all the way behind it. She has a nice little web entrance. And then if you look down toward the bottom, you can see where she has burrowed all the way down to the bottom of the enclosure and has created a little den in there. So again, with the Formingochilus omothymus species, Lamprope species. I know folks read that they're big, beautiful arboreals, but they will spend a lot of their lives as slings, juveniles, and even young adults, sometimes up through adulthood, burrowing. So moist, deep moist substrate is always key with these guys. You don't want to scrimp on the substrate. You want to make sure they have enough to dig in. Water dishes, very, very important because these are considered to be moisture dependent species. Now I will say this one's been growing a little more slowly than I was expecting. However, I'm hoping it's a female, although after looking up some pictures of males and females, males seem to be a little browner at this stage. This one seems to be a little bit more brown. We'll see how it goes. If not, and we get a male, we'll obviously send it out for breeding because I'd love to see more of these in the hobby. Folks that love the large Asian arboreals, especially ones with little dashes of color, that green carapace is just to die for, would we'll be very interested in checking these guys out. And hopefully if we get enough of them out there, the prices will dip so people can afford them. So that will do it for this one. As always, if you liked it enough to subscribe, very much appreciate. Click the little circle right up in there. I'm going to put another video featuring rehousing of the species down here by my buddy Adam adds arachnids, which will be worth checking out. And then I'll put something up here, probably best for viewer. As always, if you take the time to comment, know that I will take the time to respond. That'll do it for this one, guys. Stay safe. We'll catch you all next time.